The next item of business is a Members' Debate, Business Debate on Motion No. 1815, in the name of Jeremy Balfour, on the 100th anniversary of the Cub Scouts. The debate will be concluded, if people would just leave quietly, please, the debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Jeremy Balfour to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Balfour. Uh, thank you. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, it's a great pleasure to open this uh, member's debate on the 100th anniversary of the Cubs. Can I thank all the members of different parties who supported the motion that I put down? And can I also give a big welcome to some Cubs, their parents and leaders here from the Lovians who are in the public gallery this evening? I think the first public promise I ever gave was when I joined the Cubs uh, a few years ago. I still remember the words, I promise I will do my best to do my duty to God and the Queen to help other people and keep the Cub Scout law. Scouting began in 1907 and in January 1914 a pilot programme for younger boys named Wolf Cubs or Junior Scouts was launched. Within 12 months, 10,000 boys had already joined. After a two-year trial, it was decided to put Wolf Cubs to an official standing within the Boy Scout Association. And on the 16th of December, a launch was held at the, uh, in London. When the club section was formed in 1916, it was for eight to 10 year olds, and they were called Wolf Scouts. It wasn't until 1967 that the name changed to Cub Scouts. Cub Scouts have always been at the heart of the community. They've always been part of what they do. During the war, Cubs joined many different communities in helping out, cooking, first aid, and many of them knitted socks and other things for the armed forces in the trenches. When children were evacuated, often their cub pack went with them so that they had familiar surroundings in difficult times. And community is still at the heart of scouting today. Last week, it was the Scout Community Week, or those of us who are slightly older will remember as Bobber Job Week, where, you used to, where your people helped out with bulbs, pick litter, helped out in different local events. And Cubs have been making a difference in our community, communities for 100 years. This year there's a special focus on four key issues. Impro improving the lives of those affected by dementia, improving the lives of the disabled, improving the mental well-being and, re and re resilience of families as a global movement, ensuring people everywhere have clean water and sanitation. As well as fun, friendship, adventure, the Cub Scouts are also prepared for life. In the Cub Scouts, young people get a chance to try out lots of different activities and many adventures. Children and young people get the opportunity to learn to love these type of things by working together. The Cubs believe that adventure is part of a vehicle for this. I remember very clearly on my first night, uh, scraping both knees and getting three stitches thanks to the games that we played in that activity. It's good to learn how to play in the woods, to build dens, to go on walks, to go camping. And being in the Cub Scouts allows young people to take part, not only in individual things, but in team building, by doing things together, to work out how you have responsibilities, to make choice, and yes, to take risks as well. Scouting has and is an activity for all. Scouting has developed non-formal education to young people for more than a century, and it helps them find their potential. Preparing Cubs for their future, whether in higher education or employment, is at the heart of their movement. It's not just prepared for camping, 
is prepared for life. And the encouraging thing here in Scotland is that the figures are increasing. Figures released in April of this year showed that after 10 years of consecutive growth, Cubs Scout Scotland now has the highest membership numbers this century. The continuing popularity of scouting movement means that there are now 46,095 members in Scotland. That is up from 3.9% last year. This makes the Scouts the largest co-educational movement in Scotland. The, the Cubs currently have 12,549 members and are the fastest growing section. And the only reason we can't take more is not the lack of children, but the lack of adults who can volunteer to look after the packs. Cub Scouts across Scotland are taking part in activities to mark this century. Later this month, I hope to attend my own pack celebration here in Edinburgh. Hundreds of events have been held already this year. Adventure camp camping has taken place. People have learned how to do archery, climbing, giant games, and far more. And looking into the year in December, the official part birthday of Cubs, it will be seen on the 16th of December. This is the day in 1916 when Wolf Cubs were launched. Cubs and former Cubs from right across the country will retake their promise at 7.16 p.m. on the 16th of December to mark the century and to launch the next century of Cub Scouting. Activities will take place across our country. I'm happy that this debate is taking place, happy to celebrate that the 100th anniversary. It's a wonderful milestone. It's a wonderful acknowledgement of this youth development. I'm proud to be part of this history and wish them lots of luck with the ongoing celebration. Here's to another year of growth and making the world a better place. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Balfour. I, uh, I call Stuart Stevenson, followed by Rachel Hamilton. Stuart Stevenson, four minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And let me start by congratulating uh, Jeremy uh, Balfour on giving us the opportunity to collectively and individually uh, revisit, uh, in my case, the many decades uh, that have passed uh, since I was a Boy Scout. A um, 100th anniversary is a very significant anniversary. Uh, and so let me, like others, uh, wish them a very happy anniversary on the 16th of December, a very happy uh, birthday. The purpose of Cub Scouts is to support young people in their personal development, empower them to contribute to their community. Um, you may find this difficult to believe, but I was a shy, introverted young man when I joined the Cubs. Absolutely true, just believe me. Uh, and the Cub Scouts were a very important part of my personal and uh, social development. I learned lots of useful skills, how to make a tinker's oven so that you could cook a rabbit by coating it in clay, digging a hole, sticking it in the hole, putting a fire on top of it, coming back an hour later, and then deliciously eating uh, said rabbit. Uh, prefaced by how to cook a potato by throwing it in a fire and then peeling the burnt bits off afterwards, a, a start uh, to a, a culinary uh, expedition that I've uh, continued throughout my life with no success whatsoever, my wife uh, would absolutely tell me. Um, I have the scars, physical and fortunately no mental, uh, on my body like so many other uh, Cub Scouts, uh, not in Jeremy's case, on, uh, as in Jeremy's case, but on my, on, on my knee, uh, but on the end of my tongue, uh, where having been tied up and running across the floor, hopping, somebody then pulled the rope that was around my legs while I was in midair, causing me to pollax, and when my chin hit the floor, uh, to impale my front teeth on the end of my tongue. Uh, it, it, it's still there, and you can come and see it if you wish. Um, Baden-Powell, uh, who brought uh, the idea of scouting uh, from uh, South Africa, and his experiences there, um, was somebody who has inspired generations of cubs, scouts, uh, guides, and so on. Um, in Peterhead, we have a cub scout leader, 
uh, called uh, Corey Tocha, and he exemplifies the spirit uh, of the movement. Just a few months ago, Corey traveled down to London to donate stem cells for the Anthony Nolan Trust, uh, and he's made a donation that may save uh, somebody's life. His values and the values of the Scout movement uh, are part of what he is and all who are in his cub pack. And those uh, values translate into a way of life. Um, the original Christian promise is now one that encompasses people of all faiths and of none. It now, in the Scout movement, allows girls to join uh, the Scouts as well. The Scout law states that a Scout belongs to a worldwide family of Scouts, and a Scout must have self-respect and respect uh, for others. Um, my time, I used to correspond internationally and swap badges, and I ended up with a blanket that was just covered in Scout badges uh, of one sort or another. And that was part of becoming aware of the world, as well as becoming aware of my own potential and the potential uh, of other people. It's just terrific to be able to step back uh, to that period in the 1950s when I was a cub. Uh, terrific to see that the organization continues to grow and thrive in this day. May I wish it all the best for the next 100 years. Thank you very much, Mr. Seams. I fear there's not a cue to examine your tongue. Uh, Rachel Hamilton, followed by Jenny Mara. Ms. Hamilton. As a former Brownian Girl Guide, it is a pleasure to take part in this debate and one that marks a tremendous achievement in the history of Cub Scouts. And I thank Jeremy Balfour for bringing it forward as a member's debate. Not to compete with Stuart Stevenson, but I learned how to slice a banana, fill it with chocolate, wrap it in silver foil and bake it in a fire. And I had two blankets covered uh, with, with medals. Um, <laughs> 100 years is a long time and it is testament to the great work being done that we are here paying accolades to such an achievement. Unquestion unquestionably, the Cub Scouts will evolve as it has and last in perpetuity. After a career in the Army and a successful book named Aids to Scouting, Robert Baden-Powell held an experimental camp on Brownsea Island in Dorset to try out his ideas. He brought together 22 boys, some from private schools and some from working class homes, and took them camping under his leadership. This was to be considered the starting point of the Scout movement in 1907. Global membership now stands at 31 million in 216 countries, with girls and boys aged between 6 and 25. I'm pleased the 100th anniversary will see a strong focus on participation in activities. Promise parties will be held and are also important. An idea to renew and promise that the, the promise that made such a success of the Scouts. Again, it is this sense of identity and commitment to doing their best and doing good that has created such a strong and positive legacy. Thanks events will take place right across the UK. These will recognise all those people who made the Cub Scouts a success over years and to celebrate their voluntary contribution. I would like to pay particular um, tribute to Sir Garth Morrison of West Fenton. Sir Garth held many positions, once the Area Commission for East Lothian and Chief Commissioner for Scotland, Chief Scout for the UK and Overseas Territories and later appointed to the Order of the Thistle by the Queen in 2007 and knighted for his contribution to voluntary work. Sir Garth received these accolades because he helped grow the scouting movement in Scotland and the wider world. He made it more appealing by tackling stereotypes and played a key role in the inclusion of girls and even relaxed the dress code of the uniform. Another is Jack Robb from the Borders. Jack Robb, District Commissioner, Commissioner for Roxburgh, founded the Brass Monkey Camp in 1968. This is, of course, where the famous Brass Monkey Neckerchief came to exist, awarded to borderers who valiantly spent a night under canvas in November, December, January or February, with certification from their leader as proof to gain membership into the Brass Monkey Group. Jack Robb created a positive legacy which is present today throughout the borders and south of Scotland scout groups. The Borders now has groups from Eyemouth to Hoyk. An example of the interesting and inspiring work in the Borders can be found by Kelso Scout Group. The group recently became space biologists when they sowed seeds that had ventured into space. The group will grow these galactic seeds alongside normal seeds and log their differences. Such a story really is a shining example of what the, the, the work that the Scouts do. Scouts are, of course, present in East Lothian. The Dunbar Group recently ventured to winter camp at Kielder, where they drove tanks like our leader, Ruth Davison. <clears throat> 
Clearly, all these groups do fantastic work to develop new skills and provide fresh and exciting experiences for members. I am thrilled by the depth of opportunity the Scouts provide in the south of Scotland and long may it continue for another 100 years. Such stories clearly reflect the importance we place on these groups. Scout groups make up the core fabric of each community they reside in, bringing together those from all backgrounds and promoting core promises of doing their best and doing good for our community. Deputy Presiding Officer, I can only reiterate what I said in my opening remarks. I am delighted to take part in this debate and highlight the great work the Scouts have done for the last 100 years, and long may their good work continue. Thank you very much. I call Jenny Marra to be followed by David Torrance. Ms Marra, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I start by thanking Jeremy Balfour for bringing this very joyful debate uh, to the Chamber tonight? And can I congratulate the Cub Scout movement on your 100th birthday? I think uh, from this position I can spot six uh, Cub Scouts in, in the gallery tonight. And can I tell you that um, I think everyone aspires to celebrate their 100th birthday, Deputy Presiding Officer, to live that long, but to maintain the beauty and vibrancy of uh, being around 8 to 10 years old is something I think we all aspire to. Can I, I want to talk tonight a little bit, Presiding Officer, about the values of the um, Cub Scout movement. I think for many children, across the country, across the world that have been involved in uh, Basin Powell's movement. They have learned invaluable skills that allows them to take through, through their lives. Teamwork, problem solving, fitness, uh, loyalty and discipline. I saw these values and skills in action just a few weeks ago when for the uh, movement's 100th birthday, I spent a lovely Monday evening visiting the 20th Dundee Cub Scouts group. Uh, we had a fantastic evening. We were uh, making paths out of sticks and uh, stones outside, doing a little bit of path uh, finding. We played games inside and I saw some of the training that the very dedicated leaders were putting uh, the boys and girls through um, for their competitions. The 20th Dundee Scouts Group actually won awards at the camps that are mentioned in the motion tonight. And the community that they are in, I think, really values uh, the work that those leaders do. I'd like to pause on that for a minute, Deputy Presiding Officer, because I think uh, the whole country um, owes a great debt to the leaders of the Cub Scout movement, the Scout movement, and indeed the Rainbows, Brownies and Guides movement. These people give up so many of hours of their weeks, uh, countless evenings, and I know uh, that so many of them have a lifelong commitment uh, to the movement on a voluntary basis. Some started out as, as, uh, as cubs and scouts themselves and have taken their commitment to the movement right through. I think that commitment um, and that experience is absolutely invaluable and I think you should be saluted for the service that you give to our communities. Presiding officer, let's be under no doubt that communities across the country need these groups. I was saddened uh, that night, although I was aware this was happening, to discover that there were fewer uh, um, Cub Scouts and Brownie and Guides groups in Dundee than certainly when I was uh, a Brownie and a Guide at the 31st Logie St John's Cross. Um, but I think events like this debate in Parliament today, and I was very pleased to hear Jeremy Balfour say that actually the numbers are going up. I think that's very important because I think all children uh, need to have access to the great values um, and opportunities that this movement uh, provides. For me, on a very personal level, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I have very happy memories of going to Brownies on a Friday night and my brother going into the Cub Hall next door at that time. It was, uh, it was not a co-ed uh, organisation and uh, skipping out afterwards for a can of ginger beer and a sherbet lolly habits that I still uh, like to do today. But I think um, for lots of young people across this country, you bring great joy. The movement brings great joy and great values to our communities. Finally, I'd just like to say, Presiding Officer, that I think retaking the promise is a very fitting way 
both for current Cub Scouts, but also those uh, retired Cub Scouts, perhaps like Stuart Stevenson and Jeremy Balfour themselves, to rekindle their love and value of the movement. Thank you. Thank you. I call David Torrance, to be followed by John Scott. Mr Torrance. Thank you, President Officer, and I would like to refer members to my register of interests. I'd also like to thank Jeremy Balfour for securing this debate on the 100th anniversary of the Cub Scouts today and also welcome members of the Scout Association to the Chamber today. Presiding Officer, I have been involved with the Scout Movement for most of my life and remained as committed today as a leader of, in the 5th Five Scout Group, Kakodi. And try saying 5th Five Scout Group fast. I recall as a young boy of eight attending my first Cub meeting, the keeler or leader of the pack, a lovely woman called Mary Pearson, took me through the introduction of scouting before showing me to my six of greys. Never did I think that on that cold March night in 1969, my first steps into scouting would lead me on such an incredible journey that would last for the rest of my life. Scouting was started in 1907 by Lord Baden Powell of Girwell, following the experiment camp on Brownsy Island, which 20 boys attended. In a very short time, scouting became extremely successful across the whole of the UK. As boys were required to be age 11 or over to participate, scout groups were faced with a growing problem of younger siblings who were also wanted to be part of this grand adventure. To resolve this problem, Ben Powell created the Wolf Cubs in 1916 for these younger boys who are keen to join the Scout movement. The Wolf Cubs are based upon Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book. Leaders take their names from the story and the groups are called packs. Packs comprise of sixes with one sixer in charge. Every week, weekly meeting begins and ends with a grand howl. This format of Wolf Cubs lasted some 50 years until 1966 when the Chief Scout Advanced Party Report made several recommendations. Changes implemented in 1967 as a result of this report included changing the names to Cub Scouts and a new progressive training scheme of bronze, silver and gold arrow awards. Presiding officer, I remember these awards well as it was every boy's goal to achieve a gold accolade. Since 1967 there have been many and more various changes to the Cub section including badge work, the uniform and how a section is run. The most significant change occurred in 1990 with the introduction of girls to, into all sections of scouting. This move brought with it fresh challenges to an organisation that had been male dominated for so long. The Cub Scout section aims to be accessible, inclusive and encourages participation from every member of the local community. This is demonstrated in the Cub Scout Promise, which reflects the range of faiths, beliefs and attitudes in Scotland. Whilst working towards the badges, Cubs try to a wide range of different activities with participation and personal development being fundamental. By working together in team activities, the children gain a sense of belonging whilst helping each other to succeed, they learn and develop skills that ultimately enable them to become better citizens. Whilst being a scout is indeed fun, it also teaches real life skills, helping to prepare, ch prepare children for the future and to realize their full potential. This modern approach has allowed a continued growth of scouting in Scotland. This year's membership census shows a 10th consecutive year of growth with over 46,000 members. This success brings many additional added pressures. Many people forget that all leaders and helpers within groups are volunteers. The Scout Association recognise that they are the most important asset and are committed to ensuring that volunteer volunteers receive the best possible training and support. Adults working in Scouting across the UK contributed in excess of 364 million hours of voluntary work each year in their local communities. Within my own district of Kakodi, we have 11 scout groups, consisting of a total membership of 739, 202 of which are Cub Scouts. A number of these members attended the Big Birthday Bash 100 Cub Centenary Camp at Fordo Furs in June of this year. This event was only one of a number which was held to mark a milestone in their history. Presiding officer, in summing up, if it had not been for the skills and enthusiasm of a certain Cub leader over 40 years ago, would my journey through Cubs to Scouts, Venture Scouts, and then on to become a leader ever happened? Cubs was the starting point of my introduction into Scouting, which has now continued for 47 years with the same group. I believe that the success of Cub Scouts over the past 100 years can be attributed to the drive, dedication and passion of its volunteers, regardless of what challenges they are faced with. The commitment to a scouting family is admirable. Presiding officer, I once again would like to thank Jeremy Balfour for bringing this debate to Parliament and wish not only the Cubs, but the entire scout movement worldwide all the best for the future.
Thank you very much. I call John Scott, followed by Alison Johnson. And Alison Johnson will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Scott, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And may I begin by thanking my party for inviting me to take part in this debate, as well as congratulating Jeremy Balfour on having his motion 100th anniversary of Cub Scouts selected for debate today. I don't think my party knew that I was once a Cub. Certainly it's not on my CV. Perhaps they just assumed I'm the sort of person who would have been a Cub like Stuart Stevenson a long time ago. And I'm surprised and indeed disappointed that Stuart Stevenson no longer thinks of himself as being shy and introverted. <laughs> my spell in the Cubs in Bar Hill in South Ayrshire in the late 1950s and early 1960s was my first experience of youth organisation and was character building for me. In those days, taking the vows to become a cub were important to me at any rate, and indeed still are, and worthy of repetition with the Cub Scout promise being, on my honour, I promise I will do my best to do my duty to God and the Queen, to help other people, and to keep the Scout law, which is to always do your best, to think of others before ourselves, and to do a good turn every day. And with a motto like, be prepared, that is just about an ethic for life striving essentially to put others before oneself, and it now seems almost an outdated concept, but I believe it is one of the set of ideals that derived from the 20th century. Formed in 1916 in the terrible year of the Battle of the Somme, self-sacrifice for country and others was expected and was made. Similarly, self-sacrifice for others during the Second World War was still uppermost in the minds of my parents in the 1950s and 60s when I was a child, and grew up with a huge sense of duty to leave the world a better place than the one I was born into, which I suppose is what unites all parliamentarians in our Scottish Parliament and indeed across the United Kingdom and the world, that is to improve on what has gone before. That we constantly disagree about how to reach the sunny uplands is more about different route maps about how to get to a promised land rather than having significantly differing objectives. And we should perhaps reflect on this from time to time in, in the adversarial world of politics in which we live. While I was only ever a member of the Cubs, I have since becoming the MSP for Air constituency, become an even greater supporter of our youth organisations. And it may surprise some of you to know that I'm an ambassador for the Girl Guides in Ayrshire, where whenever I meet with them, I'm impressed by their determination to develop their resilience and character so that they too might work in the service of others as well as for themselves. In my constituency, we have six Cub Scout groups, and they are the 12th and the 14th Ayrshire, both based in Prestwick, the 18th, 28th, 43rd, and 100th, all based in Ayr, and the 28th Ayrshire is based in Troon, and I salute those organizations today. More groups exist across South Ayrshire in the Carrick, Cumnock, and Doon Valley constituency, with a second Ayrshire formed in Ballantrae, the 3rd Ayrshire based in Girvan, the 7th is based in Maybole, the 31st is based in Lones, the 48th in Dundall, the 66th in Simonton, the 69th in Turbolton, the 77th in Daly, making a total of 14 groups in all, under whom I'm very proud. Of course, none of these district scout groups would exist without the many men and women who volunteer to help and lead these organisations. And society owes them a debt of gratitude too, as others have said. And as Jeremy Balfour has pointed out, we need more volunteers to meet the growing demand for this exemplary organisation and children wishing to be part of it. In conclusion, I'm delighted to be able to support Jeremy Balfour's motion today, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the Cub Scouts. Wish them every success for years to come, building principle and resilience into our children and young people, as much needed today as it was 100 years ago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now call Alison Johnson. Ms Johnson. Um, thank you, presiding officer. I too would like to congratulate the Cubs on this notable birthday and also to thank Jeremy Balfour for securing this debate this evening. Um, like Rachel Hamilton, I was a, was, a, was a brownie and a guide, but unlike Rachel Hamilton and Stuart Stevenson, um, I think it's fair to say that, that cooking on an open fire isn't one of my skills, but perhaps my colleague David Torrance can, can help me in that regard. For years, I've watched excited young cubs pass my front door on the way to the local meeting of the 107th Pentland Cub Pack, and just a few months ago, I moved and I now stay down the hill from the Benali Centre for the South East Region for scouting. And there's always a lot going on up there. 
And friends who are active in Cubs and Scouts tell me that demand for places has never been higher and that the only constraint on numbers is the availability of adults and other young people as leaders. And I wholeheartedly back John Scott's comments that really we could do more in Parliament to encourage recruitment in this area. Um, I think one of the remarkable things about Cubs is the sheer persistence of some age-old traditions. At the 107th Pentland Cub Troop, it maintains some of the nicknames inherited from Kipling. David Torrance alluded to these. And boys and girls nowadays still take the greatest pleasure out of activities that they could have been taking part in in the 1920s. Camping in old-style tents by Blacks of Greenock, cooking on and singing songs around campfires. Here in Lothian, cubs are getting out on the Craig Lockhart Hills, the Pentlands, out along the water of Leith. And for sure, there are activities which make full use of mobile phones, tablets and apps, but all within the context of young people enjoying many of the same things they've enjoyed for decades. But other things have changed too. Cub packs, as we've heard, can have as many girls as boys now. And the scouting movement has recognised the need to always be ahead of the curve in recognising and celebrating difference, race or religion or disability, for example. And leaders are given very clear steers on safeguarding child welfare and tackling bullying so that scouting can truly welcome children from all backgrounds. Scouting is a global movement and the Messenger of Peace project is a very positive example of this. Have a look at the website and see what the projects are doing with regards to helping street gangs tackle violence in El Salvador. And in some of the most difficult conflict areas in the world, Kashmir and Sudan, for example, scouts are making a difference in local communities. And across the globe, this is happening. I really would urge colleagues to watch the video of this Messengers in Peace, and you'll hear from Adam in Sudan, and Inda in Indonesia, and Pauline in Russia. And they have really positive messages that underline our personal responsibility to contribute in our communities. But, presiding officer, research carried out by the scouting movement has come to one very clear conclusion. Young people go to Cubs and Scouts to go on camps and to get outside, and they leave when they don't get to do those things. So let's hope that this is a watchword for all our young people and that Cubs have as much fun over the next 100 years as they have had in the last. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now call Shillian Sunville to wind up the government. Minister, seven, um, seven minutes, please. Thank you, presiding officer. I'd like to thank all the participants, particularly Jim, Jeremy Balfour, for the interesting and positive debate we've had. Um, it's been shown by the different speeches that the memories that um, young children uh, gain around the, the Cub Scout movement do certainly last a lifetime. And I was delighted to hear about the positive experiences that all the members have had with Take Part in it, although slightly concerned by the injury count that kept getting um, mentioned at the start of the debate. This government has an ambition for Scotland to be the best place to grow up and I would say the best country in which to learn. And I'm delighted today that we've had the opportunity to recognise and celebrate the contribution of the Cub Scouts in taking forward that ambition. We in Scotland want our nation to flourish and that cannot be done without ensuring that every single young person, no matter what their background, ethnicity, faith or experiences, can find places to belong and to participate in wider community activities. And in my constituency and in constituencies across Scotland, all of the uniformed organisations such as the Cub Scouts, Scouts, Girl Guides, Boys Brigade are delivering a tremendous breadth of activities that contribute to young people's well-being, the confidence and life chances. And I should declare a personal interest in this as a parent of both a brownie and a beaver, although I am not picking my beaver up from her pack tonight because I'm contributing to this debate, but she did think that was a, a reasonable excuse for making, missing the pick-up point. So this government places great value on the significant contrib contribution that youth work does make and is making to help us realise our aims, our vision for Scotland. As a government, we want Scotland to be a place where opportunities are open to everyone and where everyone is able to contribute their talent, their skill and their commitment. We want to make sure that children and young people in all parts of Scotland, whether in our least or our most affluent areas, have a fair chance to flourish. And we also want to build a strong, sustainab sustainable economy, support community empowerment and encourage democratic engagement. 
And one of YouthWorks' great strength is the opportunities it gives young people to get involved in social action, in volunteering and in decision making in the heart of their communities. YouthWork also has a key role in widening access to learning, delivering our ambitions for curriculum for excellence, tackling exclusion and building the capacity of communities. It has a key role in helping our young people to be successful, to be confident and effective, responsible individuals that our nation desperately needs and in contributing to our focus on early intervention and prevention. Youth work at its best links to the communities that they are part of and engages them in local and national activities and decision making processes. It plays a key and essential role in promoting and enhancing our young people's attainment and achievement and developing their skills for life, for work and for lifelong learning and strengthening the partnerships between schools and youth work practitioners to recognise achievements remains a priority for the Curriculum for Excellence. The Cub Scouts have embraced the four capacities that underpin Curriculum for Excellence and GIRFEC and have made them relevant and shine through in all that they do. And it's hugely valuable to us that so many young people today are preparing to be active citizens and leaders. Investment in young people in Scotland today is an investment in a better future and organisations such as the Cub Scouts provide young people with a wide range of opportunities that nurture and develop those ambitions, their achievements and the skills that they need to succeed in life. The Scottish Government supports the view that closing the attainment gap requires a very broad-based approach and the work that the Cub Scouts are doing plays a very important role in supporting our young people's attainment and achievement and developing their skills for life work and lifelong learning. Indeed, the attainment challenge is closely aligned with scouting purposes, values and methods in that scouting exists to actively engage and support young people in their personal development, empowering them to make a positive contribution to society. Scout youth members are equipped with skills for life, including confidence building, working in teams, leadership, decision making, planning, communication, self-motivation, cultural awareness and commitment. And these so-called soft skills add value to young people and balanced with a formal education are integral in reducing the attainment gap. For Cubs, excitement and adventure are key, as Alison Johnson has mentioned, as well as fun. And the programme offers a huge variety of activities whilst allowing them to be creative and getting involved in their local community. And as we've heard today, Cubs are introducing exciting outdoor skills and taking part in adventure activities as well as camps and residential experiences. Now many members have uh, described what's happening in, within their constituencies and the importance of the volunteers that they've met in their constituency work and I would like to place on record my thanks to the volunteers who, without whom the Cub Scouts and the other organisations like them would simply not be able to function. I know from my own constituency how important that is. When I was looking for a local hero for the opening of Parliament, someone suggested Rod Adamson, who has been working now with the Scout movement for 51 years. He indeed started off a Cub troop in David Torrance's constituency in Kirkcaldy before the 50-year celebration of the Cub Scouts, and that Cub, uh, Cub uh, pack is still going strong. These volunteers and the leaders give up their time, their energy and their commitment week in, week out. They give so much to the young people and to the wider communities that they serve and we greatly value what they do. And as David Torrance says, without them, the drive, the dedication and passion that they have, uh, we would be a poorer place without it. Presiding officer, the Cub Scouts are providing our young people with the skills they need to succeed in life skills to fulfil their ambitions and skills to contribute positively in their communities, nationally and worldwide. So in conclusion, I would like to uh, congratulate everyone involved in the 100th anniversary of the Cub Scouts and it gives me my great pleasure to wholeheartedly support the motion tonight. Thank you very much and this former Brownie and Guide closes this meeting of Parliament.